Hi guys, welcome back. So the problem is I'm looking at all these fantastic pictures on mainly on Instagram and I see that most of you, even if you are processing your photos in Pix Insight, you keep for some reason going back to Deep Sky Stacker or Astro Pixel processor for uh, pre-processing. I'm not sure why that is, but I'm here to show you that it's really easy and yeah, let's go. And as a bonus, I'm going to use subframe selector to show you how I go through all my subframes and how I find out which are the best ones so I can get the best results in the final stack. So here we are in Pix Insight and I have a uh, set of my most recent data which was took with my new Celestron Edge HD8. I was shooting the M42 Orion Nebula as a test subject and I shot a couple of hundred five second exposures. I was not guiding for this one because my off-axis guider has some kind of problem which I was not able to solve until the first clear skies came. So I took exactly 675 second light frames and I have a matching set of darks. Okay, so we can find the weighted batch preprocessing script in a script batch processing and VBPP. I will quickly reset and clear all files from the script from the previous use and as a preset I always tend to use maximum quality with no compromises but for this case with uh, 670 subframes I can imagine it will take a couple of hours but uh, no problem I have some time. I will start with uh, loading the light frames so I click the plus lights button, navigate to the M42 subfolder and select with Control plus A all the 670 subframes. It might take some time for the subframes to load in, so don't panic, just give it a minute. Okay, so the frames are in. I have a pretty good machine here, but uh, it anyway took like two minutes. Okay, we can proceed with uh, loading the dark frames. So I will click the plus darks, navigate to the dark subframes, select all 50 in this case, and load them in. Okay, the darks are here. So as we can see, all the dark frames are 5 seconds each and we have a total of 50 frames. When I navigate to the lights, I also see 5 second subframes and the total number is 670. Good. I, in this case I will not use uh, flat frames or bias frames, just because I don't have them and I want to test it as is. So in the calibration tab, I will now click on the group of light frames and I can uncheck the flats because I'm not using them and for the darks I can leave it as is on a auto setting or I can just manually select my group of darks. A little bit lower we can apply cosmetic correction. I created a template which is uh, right here. It says cosmetic correction and it's always automatically loaded with all my uh, processing icons. So I will select that. I can quickly show you what settings I'm using. It's really just the basic. I'm using Use Auto Detect Hot Sigma 3. That's it. I just dragged the triangle to the workspace, renamed the process to Cosmetic Correction and saved it here. So yeah, pretty simple. I will now get back to weighted batch preprocessing. Everything is saved as I left it. So we now have the Cosmetic Correction template applied. I'm using a color camera, it is the ZWOSI 294MC Pro, so it's a, uh, we have to check the color filter array images and the mosaic pattern is RGGB. Okay, so, so much for uh, loading the subframes. Now in the post calibration tab, we can see that uh, the, the total time from these subframes is 55 minutes and 50 seconds. So that's not a lot of time. And in the pipeline tab, we can see all the processes that the script will be going through to create the final master file. But the issue is I don't want all these processes to happen at once. So I will get back to lights tab and here I will not create a image integration. I will not do local normalization, astrometric solution and nor I will register all the images. I will just weight the subframes. And now when I get back to pipeline, I see that we are integrating the dark frames, we are calibrating the light frames, doing cosmetic correction and debayering. For the first step, this is all I want to do because the calibrated, cosmetic corrected and debayered images, I will then load to subframe selector to have a look at it. So now I can select the output directory and hit run. This will take maybe something like half an hour, so I'll be back. 
Okay guys, so WBPP has done its job and uh, right now I have the output folder opened. So we have all the files here and we are mainly interested in these debayered subframes. As we can see, the post fix here is C underscore CC underscore D and it means that it was calibrated, cosmetically corrected and debayered. These are all the processes we wanted to WBPP to do with the subframes for the moment. Now it's time to use a subframe selector. So I will just open the process here. It has two steps. First, we have to add the files. So I will navigate to the debayered folder, select all and hit open. It loaded immediately. Now what we first need to do is to measure the subframes. So I will select measure subframes and hit the circle, wait a couple of minutes and I'll be back. Okay, so subframe selector is now done. Uh, this interface might look a little bit scary, but don't worry, we'll get through it together. If for some reason you can't see the graph or the functions, you just can click here in the small graph or this FX buttons to quickly show it. So on this handy graph, we can see all the data represented based on the measurements. And we will be mainly looking for three of them. So it's full width half maximum the eccentricity of stars and the number of stars. So we will start with full width half maximum and we can immediately see that uh, of course uh, with this metric the lower the better. So we have plenty of outliers reaching from this darker gray or even from this lighter gray zone. In general you should basically stick in the first gray zone, the darker one, but if you don't have enough sub exposures you can go a little bit higher. So I will just discard everything in the range from full width half maximum of 11 and a half and we will see how many sub exposures will be left with here in this top left corner you can see that we are currently working with uh, 651 sub exposures I actually went back and I had to delete a couple of the really bad ones with extremely long star streaks because subframe selector couldn't read them so we have 651 we will now use the expressions as i mentioned i would like to discard everything over full width half maximum of 11 and a half so full width half maximum is less than 11 and a half you can hit this play button to immediately see how many subframes will be discarded so after meeting the first condition we are now working with 575 subframes okay let's continue we now have to use ampersand ampersand sign so that subframe selector will be considering both conditions simultaneously next we will want to look at the eccentricity and in this case also lower is better so if i open a subframe with a really high eccentricity number i will just have a quick look at it the stars should be really oblong and it is indeed the case these are actually terrible eggy stars, so we don't want subframes like this in our final stack. So again, the lower the better, and we will settle for a value somewhere in between 0.55 to 0.57. So XN3 city should be lower than 0.57. Let's hit play and see how many subframes will be discarded. Okay, so now we have 542. I forgot to disable this one as well and the last parameter we are interested in is the number of stars in this case the higher the better so we are looking at the bottom of the graph and I think I will discard all subframes that have maybe 35 36 or less stars so again ampersand ampersand stars count should be larger than 30 let's say six hit the play button okay this got rid of a lot of frames but i can still see that we are working with roughly two-thirds of the frames and i know that the seeing on that night was not good actually it was bad and i was not guiding so pretty much i think half of the frames are not suitable for the final stack so i will make these parameters a little bit more aggressive so we can end up with something like 350 frames maximum Okay, I played with the numbers a bit and I ended up with 353 approved subframes. That is a number I'm happy with. So we will get back to the main subframe selector window and now we will change the routine from measure subframes to output subframes. We will now choose the directory and I will create a new subfolder with the label 
approved. I will select the folder, hit the circle and give it a couple of minutes. Perfect, a couple of minutes later the subframe selector is now done. We can close that and have a look at our directory of our approved files. We can see we have 353 frames, which is exactly what we wanted. We came a long way here, but all we've actually done is we filtered out the bad frames. Nothing more, nothing less. We have to now get back to WBPP and make the final step, which is creating a master file. Okay, when we WBPP is loaded, we will select a little bit of a different approach. We will add light frames and the light frames we are adding are of course the approved. And this time we are not doing any calibration, any darks, any anything else, no cosmetic correction, nothing. But the big difference here is that now we need to check all the other steps we were disabling in the previous step. So image registration, astrometric solution, local normalization and finally image integration. And again, as you remember, our files are now calibrated color corrected, debayered and approved. Let's get back to D for debayered. Here in a calibration tab we need to actually uncheck color filter array images because now WBPP will treat our sub exposures as they were monochrome because otherwise the script will try to debayer them one more time which is not what we want. And that's it. We will have a look in pipeline so we are doing measurements, bed frames rejection, reference frame selection, plate solving, registration, local normalization, integration and finally auto crop. We are not doing drizzle just to save some time. We will choose the output directory, select the folder and finally hit run. This is a fairly long process because 353 sub exposures is a little bit longer than I'm used to but I expect the process will take maybe something like two hours two and a half okay so finally after three and a half hours the script is done let us now take a look on what we've actually achieved and this is it great I think this actually looks reasonable well so stay tuned because in the next video I will try my best to edit this image and produce something decent yeah so I wish you all a happy new year and clear skies